And what happens when private companies make private ledgers and private blockchains and private coins? How many of you work at a company that has an intranet? That uses an internal network with an internal wiki and an internal email system? Right? How cool is that? It's not cool. And yet, when the internet started, a lot of companies thought that that's great, but the internet is going to be full of perverts and criminals and fraudsters and weirdos, and anyone can publish, and that's a terrible idea because most of it will be crazy ideas. So how about we take that and we make a closed system where we control who publishes and who connects, and we make a nice system that is suitable for all ages, kind of a Disney version of the internet. CompuServe, AOL, Prodigy, all of these systems that companies built, they failed. And the reason they failed is because they misunderstood what was the value of the internet. It wasn't the ability to send and receive data. It was the equalization of everyone as both producer and consumer, and the opportunity to have an open environment where everyone has the freedom to speak and be heard by anyone, anywhere, without controls, without censorship. That was the real value of the internet. And the real value of Bitcoin is a borderless, global, uncensorable, open system that allows anyone to innovate and access without asking for anyone's permission. And if you take that and you turn it into a closed, borderful, censored, controlled system, it is boring. It will generate profits for some, but it's not interesting in the broader sense. And once you create all of these little systems, you will have to connect them together. Bitcoin is the internet of money. If you build an intranet of money, eventually you'll want to connect it to the internet of money, <laughs> and you'll connect it via Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is the interesting blockchain. The others may be interesting for narrow purposes, just like the Justin Bieber coin is interesting to Justin Bieber fans. You know, the JP Morgan Chase coin will be interesting to JP Morgan Chase executives and very few other people. Certainly won't be as successful as Justin Bieber coin. Um, when it comes to classic and core, I think it's important to understand that Bitcoin is undergoing a debate. And in the traditional systems of money that we know, when a debate lasts too long, the boss stands up and says, that's enough debate, here's what we're going to do. Well, there's no boss in Bitcoin. So no one can say, that's enough debate, here's what we're going to do. We have to all agree, and Bitcoin is difficult to change. And the process of changing dif the difficult to change Bitcoin is loud and it's noisy. And it's full of debate, and argument, and accusations, and drama. Where I come from, we call that democracy. Now, you may not have seen democracy in financial systems before. It may be a new phenomenon, but that's not a problem for Bitcoin. That is its greatest strength. The fact that no one can impose a decision on everybody else. Core can't, even if it might look like they can. Classic can't. They each hold veto over each other. Consensus is much more broad and nuanced than we understand. And democracy looks messy. If you want efficiency, then just put one company or person in charge, and you will get efficiency. The price is freedom. We buy freedom by paying the price of inefficiency. And I will make that choice every single time. <laughs> 